My name is Chanel Dyer, I'm 21 years old and I'm a mixed martial artist and a professional Muay Thai fighter. My record for MMA is 8-3. and three. I'm currently pound for pound number 17 in the UK and number one at my weight division which is straw weight and I'm currently pro ranked number one in Muay Thai in the whole of the UK and I have 32 belts to my name including European, World, English, British, Super League, Kays Royals titles all to my name as well and yeah I'm one of the top prospects for UK MMA and female MMA at the moment. Obviously, I've done like, every other sport. I don't know if it really glued into me. But I think what um, I think MMA really stuck to me is that what I really like it now is that the freedom for MMA as well. So I made so much friends in the journey in my team. I've traveled to so many different places. The freedom MMA gives you to express yourself in the ring as well. I'm training so many different aspects of MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, wrestling, Muay Thai, kickboxing, judo, so many different sports. In, in one sport and I think MMA is such an amazing sport in that sense as well. It gives you a sense of discipline because you can go to so many different other sports and there'll be a black bar and so you're always um, improving, you always have to improve. Yeah, I think MMA, Muay Thai martial arts is one of the best sports in the world and I always advocate for people to just, even just to learn self-defense to do as well because I find myself in mixed martial arts. Before I started that, I was kind of on the crossroads, didn't really know where to go, but martial arts gave me a pathway, so gave me purpose. I think it's good for young girls to learn certain martial arts. It's for their self-esteem as well. I think, especially in this day and age, everyone has, like, my little sister there, 24-7, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. So the, the ideal woman, the ideal body is so diluted now. So I think getting into martial arts, it gives you a sense of purpose and to give you your self-confidence. Like, I'm, I'm doing this interview now, what, six years ago, I wouldn't have said one word. Like, I'll go in the room and not say one word, but martial arts gave me such a boost in confidence. Every girl in the world can um, benefit from it. Even self-defense as well, going in the street, like, um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'll go in the street and I'll be like, if anyone runs up for me, I'm, I'm fine. But like, I want someone to run up for me so I can double leg them. <laughs> Don't, but yeah, but it gives me a sense of like, I'm 100% I'm confident in myself. Steve was just like, oh, why don't you come try MMA? I said, yeah, 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 I'll come. I don't come. <laughs> when I did the Muay Thai fight, I was really up there in Muay Thai at the time. But in Muay Thai, you can't really earn a lot of money. So I was kind of like, I kind of had, I was 18, I kind of like, should I stop Muay Thai or should I go uni? Because it was like clearing day, so I was kind of like, and I don't, me, I can't work a nine to five, I can't go uni, so I was kind of like on the crossroads of to what to do. But Steve was like, come MMA. So I was like, three months later, I just turned up. And Steve, he was such an amazing person. From the second I stepped foot in the gym, he was bigging me up. He was like, yeah, you're gonna be next UFC fighter, UFC champ. I had no idea what UFC was. <laughs> he was like, yeah, you're gonna be UFC champ. Uh, you're gonna fight at the end of the year. I was like, yeah, no plans to. <laughs> but then four months later, Steve was like, do you wanna fight on Cage Royals in five days? I was like, okay. So I fought on Cage Royals five days notice. Not to go out in the first round, flying deep to the face, and I kind of went viral off of that. I got so much clout, so much messages, so much followers. Like I've got a BBC documentary off of that, so I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. This is sick. So yeah, after that, I just carried on fighting, and yeah, here I am, three and a half years later. Yeah, I started off in Muay Thai when I was about nine years old, and I've competed since nine years old but I took a kind of a two year break when I was a teenage, just do teenage stuff, you know, obviously. But yeah, since then I've had more time, more than 100 fights, like, without a doubt. I've had about 70 when I was younger and about 45 in the past three and a half years. I used to fight like every single, every two weeks, like up and down the country in Muay Thai. So when I was younger, I had five titles, English, British, Super League and a world title. 
So when I was 11 years old, I had the opportunity to represent England for the first time ever. There was an English team and they flew us all out to Turkey, everything paid for, five-star hotel. I felt like a celebrity. Now, I had no idea what was happening, but I was 11 years old. First time on the plane, first time aboard. I fought in Turkey for the world title and I won it against a Turkish girl. A three round fight and yeah, that was one of the biggest highlights of my young career in Muay Thai. But then after that, I took a two year break and I started back again. And I went on a long run to become UK number one pro ranks in Muay Thai after capturing about 26 other belts and that's so many different I've, I, can't, I, can't, I can't even remember how much belts I have now like literally I have English titles British Europeans I have like six world titles now so many different belts at home I have no space for it now but then I started MMA then I fought in Cage Royce on my first fight and then after that my second fight they gave me a title fight I was doing the BBC documentary at that time Molly was on it as well that's the first time I met Molly um, not personally, but we was in the same documentary. So they gave me a title fight on my second MMA. I was I'm only been doing MMA for six months, and they gave me a title fight against somebody that's a blue belt. I don't even know how to do guillotine. And they're giving me a blue belt. <laughs> but then I won. I won that fight, and it was like one of the hardest fights because obviously she saw me as a striker. So she all she tried to do was take me down, take me down, and it was drowning and drowning and drowning. Like I remember she got me up on the cage and Steve was like, guillotine, guillotine. And I tried to do like an arm in guillotine. Steve told me off after the fight. He was like, that's not how you do a guillotine. I was like, you've never told me how to do a guillotine. Like, why are you, why are you even giving me this fight? But um, I won and that's the first time ever, second time ever I done the, um, the face teep and I broke her orbital bone. There's a sick picture of that on my Insta. After that, everyone's just like, oh, face teep, face teep. So every fight I have to, on the third round, I have to do face teep. Everyone just screams it. My third fight, I actually thought I'm my world champion because my original opponent pulled out like a week before. So they gave me a replacement. I'm my world champion. <laughs> Literally, that fight was the hardest fight. Still to this day, that was the hardest fight of my life. Like, she was so good. She took me down, got back up, took me down. Literally, I was in one position in the fight on the cage, and I looked over at Steve, and I was like, shaking my head. He was like, get up. I was like, Steve, I can't. He's like, get up. I was like, Steve, I can't. He's like, get up. I was like, I don't want to be in this fight. And then, then literally, the third drum, I was just like, oh, like, let me just fight. And I was going to lose the fight, but five seconds to the end, I took care of her and I won. <laughs> but I said to this, to this day, if I lost this fight, I probably would have gave up MMA. Like it was so mentally taxing that fight. That I hated every single second of it until until I won. If I lost that fight, I would probably maybe have given up MMA. But I believed in myself to the end. I kept on trying, 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 and I got that knockout. That was one of my pinnacle fights in MMA. That was my make and break fight in MMA. So I fought an actual legit person, one of the best in, in the world. I'm a free European and she put it on me. She showed me what MMA actually is. So after that fight, I went back and be like, okay, Steve, I need to work on Jiu Jitsu. I need to work on wrestling, a bit more cage control. So I've done that a whole year on just on Jiu Jitsu. Like basically no striking, just like five days a week, Jiu Jitsu, like five days a week, grappling, grappling, grappling. A year later, I'm, I'm blue belt. Like three years later, I'm getting my purple belt in December. So it's been my journey. Uh, obviously right now, um, I focus on the European IMAFs. So I win the European IMAFs and then I'll do the World Championship. I think it might be in December or January. I'll win that, then I'll get signed by the proper cage warriors. I want to go the cage warriors route, that's kind of the easiest route. And right now there's no goals on the roster for some reason. So obviously when I do turn pro and I get signed for cage warriors, I'm going to be the new goal. They wanna, they, they're going to get people for me to fight and build me up and hopefully fight for the belt in about three fights, three, four fights, win the belt, then I'll get signed by UFC. Maybe contenders, maybe straight signage. Shout out to all my supporters, I'm doing it for them, I couldn't do it without you. You wake me up daily to, to pursue my dream, so shout out to you as well. Shout out to my Nightmare family. Oh.